the Reflector Reflections podcast. My name is Annie. Join me as we journey around the world talking with fellow human design reflectors as they experiment and navigate their unique design. Today's beautiful conversation is with Britta. Britta is a 1-4 reflector and an amazing full-time elementary classroom teacher. Welcome, Britta. Thank you so much, Annie. It is wonderful to be here. I have um, been listening to your podcast for a while and it feels a little surreal that I'm on it now, to be honest, kind of fangirling right now. (laughs) Oh, that's so good. And I'm so glad that you've been listening and benefiting from it and Mm -hmm. hopefully feeling a little comfortable because you kind of yeah listening to me yes yes no no I I definitely feel comfortable because I I like I said before we started rolling but I've been listening so I know the structure so I feel very comfortable but there's also another part of me that's like oh my gosh I'm on this podcast (laughs) it is so so good to have you I put the call out just asking for some of the types that that I hadn't spoken to before and I haven't had the the pleasure and the honor to Mm -hmm. have a one for but before we go into that, can you talk to us about your journey in finding yeah. human design? Yeah. Well, I've always been really interested in like modalities for self-understanding, um, like in like Myers-Briggs, Enneagram, um, really been big into that. And I was talking with one of my friends about, it was late 2019, early 2020, I can't remember exactly, it was before the pandemic, Um, and she told me about this um, system that she had learned about called human design, and I was like, oh, I'm all about systems, I love these things, so I went and typed in my birth date, and I found out I was a reflector, and um, a lot of it made sense to me uh, already, like, it it was like, okay, yeah, I I, I, I track with this, Um, I had already been waiting sort of intuitively like 28 days to make major decisions um for the past couple years and I really resonated with people like reflecting things back to people because prior to um discovering human design I would be in situations and I would notice like I would never met the person before and I would just notice that they would be really uncomfortable with me and I'd be like I just met you like what what am I doing? What was wrong with me? Um, and so I was like, oh, that makes total sense. I'm reflecting myself back to them. And so I discovered it in early 19, late 19, early 20. And it resonated with me, but I ultimately decided to put it away for a little bit um, and not anticipating that I was going to come back to it, but I did. Because I, one of the things I really struggled with, and I know I've heard you talk about this on the podcast before, is I just felt like I was reading the same things about reflectors over and over again. And I was like, okay, like, I just am kind of bored of this. Like, there's, I feel like nobody knows what a reflector is. (laughs) Like, I just want more information. Um, So there was kind of that frustration there that I just wanted more and I wasn't getting it. And there was also the part of me that was like, this is a really, this has a really crazy origin story, this human design thing. Mm -hmm. Like this guy just like had these visions and brought it into the world. And it was like, I don't know. I, it, I was, it's like, even though I resonated with it, I was like, like, I I just feel like I don't trust this quite yet because um, and something I've learned about the one for profile is that we need one for us need time to kind of get comfortable with things, um, which I definitely resonate in my life. So I was like, okay, this reflector thing totally makes sense to me, but at the same time, I'm totally not on board yet. So I put it away for a little bit and I ended up coming back to human design in early 2021 Um, And I just was like, one night I was in grad school at the time, one night I was probably should have been doing homework, but I was just like, I kind of feel like looking into human design again. (laughs) And so I did. And I found this YouTube video where like a reflector was talking about her experience. And I was like, oh yeah, this is great. And I, so that was like the first time I'd ever heard a reflector speak. And then a little while later, I found Emma Dunwoody's podcast, the Human Design Podcast, and um, I listened to the um, episode with Simone Gallagher, which was uh, 
um, the first time I was introduced to Simone before I listened to yours. And that was the second time I had had direct experience, like listening to a reflector, which was really cool. And it was really like what I wanted was more of that. Mm. Um, and then I kept listening to Emma's podcast and I just really loved what I was hearing. I kept practicing. I was practicing the 28 days thing more and more just intentionally because before I had been doing it, not just like doing it. And, um, and then when I really started to be like, this is it is when I moved, I had been living in a pretty unhealthy environment for me. Um, and then in August of 20. 21. So like about seven months ago now, I moved um, to a new environment. I had been living in Washington, D.C. at the time. And my plan was to stay in D.C. I was going to get a job there and I was going to work there and I was going to live there. And my plan was to get my job before I got my new apartment because I wanted to live close to where I worked. Well, out of the blue, I get a call from someone in my network. I'm a fourth line, so network is really important to me. And they're like, we have this uh, position open at the school in Virginia. Are you interested? And I was like, okay, well, I didn't want to work in Virginia, but I really like what I'm hearing about this school. All right, I'll talk to the assistant principal. All right, I'll interview. And... I ended up getting the job. I ended up moving from out of DC into Virginia. And oh my gosh, this change I saw in myself yeah. being in a better environment for me was amazing. Mm. And that's when I really started to be like, okay, I'm starting to trust this human design thing that before I was not quite trusting. And it's just been amazing. I feel like I've been deconditioning so much over the past few months because I'm in the correct environment, which is incredible. Um, I have been looking more into different parts of my profile. Um, I also came across your podcast a few months ago, which is like exactly what I've been looking for, for like ever. Um, just wanting to hear from other reflectors, um, which has been so nice. Um, and I, I, I just, it's, I've been joining more of the Facebook groups and kind of just interacting more with reflectors online. And it's just been amazing just seeing how far I've come. And it, it like, it, it was that move that did it where I was like, all right, there's something to this human design business. Like I, I resonated with it before, but now I'm actually starting to believe it. Yeah. And I love that you said that because it does, yeah, the, the whole he went off on a pretty much psychedelic trip for seven years. Yeah. <laughs> you, you do. You sort of like, hang on a second. Um, but then when you get into it and you really mm -hmm. embrace it, you're like, I can't, the logical parts of our brain just want to say, hang on a minute. That's, he was just on an LSD trip for seven days. <laughs> yeah, and, right. But I can't deny it because how no. it makes me feel. Yeah. I've always sort of said to people, regardless of whether or not you believe it or you don't believe it, even if you take 1% from it, it still mm -hmm. makes you better than you were yesterday or still makes you feel a little bit more wholesome. Yeah. I love that you have just honoured and, and you can feel that shift in your body of knowing what is, it, what is a good space for you because yeah. I think that can get brought up a lot. It's like we get told that, don't we, you know, find environments that feel good, but it's mm -hmm. often, well, what does that really mean? Yeah. <laughs> what does that really mean? What does it mean? But then when you and, feel it, you feel it. Um, yeah, no, you absolutely do. It is it is something that for reflectors who are like struggling with that, it's like you really just have to feel it. You, you have to, it, it's not anything logical. Because <laughs> everything in my logical mind was telling me to, like I wanted, I knew where I wanted to be. Yeah. And then when a situation came up where I moved to a different environment, it's not where I wanted to be, but it ended up being so much better for me. Yeah. And I really, like, when you, you're saying, you know, when you started and you kind of put it away because it just wasn't, and that's that, that first line of yours, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. really hit, hit the really? that first line of yours. Yeah. Just going, mm -mm, this doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense. And mm -hmm. you were saying there, I like that you were saying that you were naturally already honouring 
your cycle yeah. because so many of us don't because yeah. you know, we're trying to catch up to everybody else and trying to rush or be pushed and rushed. So that was really nice. But what else did you, what else did you start to incorporate? Um, well, the 28 days for sure. Um, I really um, just sitting, just trusting more, I think. Um, especially with my fourth line and knowing that a lot of the things that are supposed to come to me come through my network and like that's totally what happened with this job um what else can I incorporate um I think for me I just really working on trusting because I can be a little bit impulsive sometimes and I think I mean as a reflector there's the 28 days thing you know you're supposed to wait 28 days but there's also just waiting in general like I don't have to go with that first thing that I think I need to do I don't need to say the first thing I think I need to say I can because I've gotten into some trouble in the past few years, like thinking, oh, I need to say this right now. Yeah. I need to send this message right now. Um, and just honoring the fact that what I will know intuitively when it's correct yeah. to say something. And I'm not always a pro at that still. Like I definitely find in the classroom that's still something I'm working on with my students is like, okay, like, just because other teachers do and say that doesn't mean it's right for me to do and say that. And so managing classroom ma classroom management for me has been a bit of a, a challenge and a trip to say the least, just because it's like, I'm watching a lot of what other teachers are doing. And then I have to remind myself, okay, I don't have to do that because that's not my design. And so just being very intentional, not always successfully at, stopping thinking I've also gotten the habit of like taking a breath because when you're in a classroom of 24 students there's a lot of energy and I easily absorb it so much of it and so just making sure that I'm not reflecting back to them their stuff and instead I'm taking a breath and like okay let's get centered before I get really angry that they're not doing what I want them to do <laughs> and so I really think that's important is that we often forget that even though this was a teaching, it's, it's mm -hmm. an experiment and it is. we can get caught in that sometimes. Hey, and we just think, oh, well, they're doing it that way. They're doing it that way. I've got to follow yeah. suit. And it's like, well, no, this is my experiment and your yeah. experiment. And we are going to navigate this our way. Yeah. What feels good for us. Mm -hmm. But getting into that. So let's, let's, let's go straight there. Like, you're a full-time teacher working yes. probably in a very busy school with 24 yes. kids, yes. elementary kids at that. Fifth, uh, fifth graders, which um, for those of you not in the U.S., uh, 10 and 11-year-olds right in the cusp of puberty. <laughs> yeah. And I don't even know, where do we start with that? One, that's a lot of energy. It is. It is. It's a lot of energy. That's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Did you always know you wanted to be a teacher? When I was really little, I did. Uh, when I was like in, you know, seven, eight years old, I wanted to be a teacher. I would like draw like classroom designs up in little notebooks. It was actually kind of cute. Uh, I don't know if I have any of them still, but it'd be fun to look back on that. And I did. And then I went through a phase when I was, um, you know, got into middle school, became more self-conscious where I was like, I'm too introverted. I'm too shy. I can't do this. Um, and, you know, I eventually came back around to it. Um, and I did not go to undergrad. I did not get my undergraduate degree in teaching. Um, I did get my master's degree. I just got my master's degree in teaching last year. Um, but no, I, I did. And, and then I, I did always, when I was little, I did, but it, then I kind of lost that and thought I couldn't do it. And then it took me a while to come back and be like, okay, I still, I still want to be a teacher. Yeah. So, so how um, is it is. Today life for you. How does it's, it, how does it look? 
it's very regimented. <laughs> it's like the same. It's, it's, you know, I get up at, you know, five o'clock, I get ready to go, I go and get ready for school. Um, I'm, you know, at school by 7.15 in the morning. School starts at eight. My kids are in the classroom by 7.40, but I'm in like school officially starts at eight. Um, I have, you know, the morning with the kids. I have a, a, a 40 minute planning period, 45 minute planning period um, early in the morning when they go to like their specials. So they like have music or PE or like, you know, teacher classes that other teachers teach. So you get to step out a little bit. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have like a 30 minute lunch, which is usually closer to a 20 minute lunch by the time all the kids are like ready for lunch. Um, and then school gets done at 2.30. And then, you know, I spend a few hours after school, um, you know, just getting things situated. I doing grading, like doing any more planning that I need to do for the next day. It's very regimented. It's a very strict schedule. And like, I, I like that. I like having, I mean, I have gate five and I, so I like having the structure. Um, but it's a lot. And I know, like, I'm just, I've always known that it's not something that's going to be forever for me being a full-time teacher. I think I will always be a teacher in some capacity, but being in the classroom, it's a lot of fun. And I do, I feel like I ended up in a very, like, I feel like my school is a very correct environment for me. So I do get energy um, from being with the kids, but I also have a really like good supportive team that I work on. Um, I just feel like if I was in any other school, it would be a very different story because again, we know that reflectors, well, if you don't know, environment is very important to reflectors. Um, but I feel like I am very lucky to be where I am in the current school that I am. And like, I, I, it is very lucky that I ended up there. Um, but well, it's very on, on divine time yeah it just trust like the trusting and you know I got that call and from that and oh, but it's a lot and you know it's Friday night now that we're recording and in in my time and I'm exhausted and I'll probably go to bed shortly after we hang up <laughs> but um it's a lot and it's so tiring and I don't get enough sleep and sleep is really important to reflectors it's important to everyone but um it's also like one of those things where I feel like it's such an adventure to do this right now. And I'm so glad I am. Some days I'm not, but most days I am. <laughs> it's energy um, in a way, isn't it? You know, we and, all go through yeah. it. It's like, oh, yeah. Tired. And of you know, course, we're not the same and, every day. No. And I know I won't be in the full in the classroom full time forever. I've always known that. Yeah. I think, even before I graduated from grad school. But I'm really grateful to be having the experience now. Oh, that's lovely. And I'm so glad, um, and I know that that's, that's a big load for you to take on, but I'm also so glad to hear that that you do get some respite from the energies mm -hmm. where you know, they can go out for 30 minutes. Yeah. That's something that's been really shown to me the more I do these podcasts and talking with other reflectors is that just even stepping outside or just stepping away from people yes. is a recharge for us. Yeah, um, it is. It is. You know, it's only a small thing, but it really does help that you can have those yeah. small breaks to kind of go, okay, oh, I yeah. can do this now. And so how does that go with um, students in your class? Do you find that random question coming at you here? That's fine. Have you started to notice like being aware and really opening yourself up to being a reflector? Have you started to observe students in your class and think, Hmm. you need some extra help you might be a manifesting generator you know you've got that extra do you, have you oh absolutely yeah I can pick that like I can pick the MGs out in a the crowd they're the busiest bunch they're the busiest bunch they're the kids that won't stop talking <laughs> I mean not to like totally stereotype MGs I'm sorry but like it's like you can without obviously knowing their designs I can I can look at students and be like okay you're probably an MG because you have a lot of energy right now. And, you know, there's other students that I have been like, you know, students that I'm wondering if they're projectors and um, a couple 
days ago, I was talking with one of my students. Um, and like I specifically said, I invite you to come and talk to me whenever you feel you need it. And I noticed in the past couple of days that she's been reaching out to me more. And so I'm like, interesting. No, I do. I think about it a lot. Like, well, not like a lot, a lot, but I have like been like, hmm, I wonder yeah. what their designs are. And I wonder how I can help them better. Of course, I don't know their actual chart, but like, I wonder if I can help them better if I consider this. So I love that. <laughs> I could only imagine, I mean, I'm in the schoolyard a lot as a parent yeah. around children because I work with with parents, mm -hmm. but I know that I sometimes dabble in it. You know, I, I do kind of think, hmm, mm -hmm. and, I, and I ask the yes, no questions and I mm -hmm. ask, you know, to, to you know, inviting in and I just find that, yeah, the, the responses you get from the mm -hmm. children is completely like it's, it's like, whoa, this is powerful. This is powerful. And having that it knowledge is. that you've got, I'm sure, benefits them so greatly, like understanding that this child who just wants to talk and needs to self-express and probably, you know, could, yes. be, could be a projector, just needs to talk, yes. needs to have that. And, and by you understanding human design, you can kind of go, I understand you and not get as frustrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. I, I still get frustrated some days, but yeah. well, yeah, of course, like there are definitely, like if you're a mental projector, but um, I definitely find that it, I still get frustrated some days, um, mm -hmm. but it does. I have been really working, especially in the last couple of weeks, just in like stepping back. Sometimes I do physically step back. Sometimes I just take a breath and like, mm -hmm. okay, before I say anything right now, before I like call out that one student for being really annoying. <sighs> All right. Well, how can I, how can I make a, a calmer choice? <laughs> and do you sometimes yeah. wonder if, again, I'm not a teacher, so I'm just throwing these questions at you, <laughs> but yeah, if something does happen in the class and a student's reacting differently than they mm -hmm. normally would, do you, do you wonder sometimes whether or not you are reflecting back to them something that's frustrating them? And oh, absolutely. Yeah. I have seen, like, I have, honestly, I've noticed myself doing this. And when things get really hectic in the classroom, sometimes, like, it really depends. I've noticed, like, my energy levels, like, my classroom management really like it differs from day to day based on my energy levels um but I've also noticed that when I like kind of start yelling at a student or like being like sit down like you have to sit down um that often aggravates my students more whereas like another teacher could be like sit down class and like the class would sit down that just like makes my kids go crazy because I'm reflecting all, all that back to them. So no, I, I, I really have been monitoring, okay, what am I doing that is reflecting and how can I rise above that? Not always successful, but I've really been trying more um, because I had like, it's like a lot of it, a lot of the struggles that I had at the beginning of the year, it's gotten better as the year's gone on, the more I just recognize the reflector in me and know about human design I'm like I can't I can't do that I can't be that teacher that like you know I just have to be really mindful about how I'm saying things because imagine managing that many personalities and that many auras at once and just you know, yeah <laughs> it's hard <laughs> it's how hard manage that energy how do you manage your energy like you know you're going to have days where you're really fatigued and they're just going to come at you how do you mm -hmm. how do you manage that or um, how do you manage that I think for me like my school is like I said it's a very it's the correct environment for me to be in like I just know that and so I have more energy at work just because I feel like it's correct. I'm also surrounded by a bunch of 
generators and MGs who are also teachers. And so like, I just am kind of riding off the wave of them throughout the day. So even I've noticed, like, even if I like wake up and I feel really sluggish, I'll go to work and I'm all of a sudden surrounded by all this like defined energy and I'll like, oh yeah, I have more energy now. And so that helps. That does help. Um, just being really mindful about how much I work has been really important for me too. Um, it's important for all types to be mindful about how much they work because burnout is real across the board. Um, but I was doing a way too much before the new year. Um, and I ended up kind of bringing myself out um, those first few months of school because this is my first year. I just graduated from this, from grad school. So this is my first year in the classroom like as a, as a full-time teacher. Um, and um, so going into the new year, I like made like a resolution. I don't typically make resolutions, but this year I was like, okay, this year I am not going to work as much as I did last year. Yeah. Um, and so I've been really mindful about, you know, I, I do this stuff I need to do at school. I'll come home and like maybe do an hour's more work, um, if I need to. And then I shut my computer and I don't open it up the rest of the night because, I just, I can't, it's, there's, it's, there's always something I could be doing as a teacher, Mm. but I just can't do it all. That's really, really good that you honor those boundaries because you're aware, you're aware that you want to keep doing this and these are, this is the boundaries, this is, this is where the buck stops. You have to. And I, I have more energy during the school day. I feel like I'm just a better teacher knowing that I, you know, have that, you know, it's usually by six o'clock, if not earlier, I like shut my computer and I'm done. Um, and it just has made such a difference. That's like so <laughs> I'm doing what I can and just being really mindful on the weekends as well. Like not taking too much on, on the weekends and making sure I get enough sleep on the weekends. Um, just really honoring my downtime and knowing that like I need that downtime to rest and recuperate yeah yeah that's so good and have you um have you spoken to your colleagues about human design are they aware no 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 I haven't (laughs) I mean I I I am like as a one for I think I'm I have learned and I have done research and uh, well, of course I have the, I have the one line and I was doing research. Um, but one fours are definitely a little more hesitant. I feel like about, you know, opening up to people. Um, and I definitely resonate with that in my life. So I feel like, you know, sharing that part of me at work, it's kind of like human design is, oh, of course I'm on a public podcast right now. Human design is like a private part and like it, it just kind of, I haven't, yeah. maybe one day I will, but I haven't. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. So are you in your, you're saying there before that you, you really honor that on the weekends to take your time, take your time to nurture you and to sort of like pull back mm-hmm. and make sure you're rested. Are you able to do that? Or have you got people around you often that you've got to kind of get away from? Um, I live alone right now. Um I have lived alone since August. Um, and so, yes, I have plenty of time to recharge. It is, I, I love living alone. Yeah. Probably don't, don't think I want to do it forever because I do like having um, other energy in my space. But for right now, especially as a full-time teacher, it's just really nice to have that time. Yeah. So. And as you were saying, it's still your first first year or coming into your second year in. So you mm-hmm. you've been putting your best foot forward, you know, as we do. We wanna we wanna just get in there and and until you kind of like get yeah. settled and can kind of relax, which sounds yeah. like you're doing. So you're really honoring you. Yeah. And you know, I have friends and stuff that I'll see and um, I do have a community, but I mean a a lot of my friends in the area that I live in now there from from grad school and so we're all first year teachers and we're all kind of in our heads so we haven't actually seen each other as frequently as we were planning on doing last school year when we were still in grad school um but no I do have I do have community but I also 
um, have that time to recharge. And I think I'm pretty good about knowing when I need that time to recharge. So, That's so good. Yeah. So you're saying there, you know, you've got your friends, your family, have you plugged all their details in? Have you done, <laughs> have you done that, that, that deep dive into? Um, I have, I know, I saw my, one of my best friends, um, I went through her chart with her a couple of weeks ago because I was like, let me show this to you. And I know she's a generator. Um, she's a 2-4 generator. Um, I haven't plugged in. I don't know. I haven't talked, like like I said, 1-4 here, still like haven't shared it with my family. I also come from a family that isn't super spiritual or like super like, you know, into um, things that aren't, easily explainable and so I I haven't broached it to them I might um in the future but um I I did go through for my immediate family like I went through like all the hours of the day and like tried to figure it out and I know that um, my mom like her whole day was a manifesting generator day so I'm pretty sure she's an MG which makes a lot of sense um <laughs> And I think my brother is too. Uh, I'm not quite sure about my dad, but I would guess he's probably a generator. He doesn't have the same energy that my mom does. So, um, but I don't have their exact details. Yeah, I did that as well. I went in the back door, like I fi- tried to figure it out. And then I went in the back door and just asked them, what, what time were you born? You? <laughs> you know? And I didn't tell them why. And it wasn't yeah. until a little months later I was sort of mentioned something and they were like, oh, yeah. But there was only so far that I could go with that information mm-hmm. before they kind of just shut down and went, I don't understand what you're talking about. What are you talking about? <laughs> you don't need to. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah, I might start. I might one day. I mean, you never know, but it just has never felt right for me to, like, broach it to them. Yeah. yeah. It happen. It's so interesting because when I did start talking to so I've obviously got two lots of parents. I'm adopted, so I've got my birth family, and yeah. my adopted family. But when I did start talking to my adopted family about that, it's like now they want to share with me all these things about their their life. <laughs> it made me realise that we probably don't ask our parents enough about their life, yeah. who they are before they had kids and became parents. Um, and now I can't shut them up. It's just like. <laughs> Oh, you know, and then, and then they forget because they're a bit older and they've told me that story. Like, yeah. Nice. And I'm like, yeah, okay, this is really nice. I've heard it before. Yeah. I could recite it. Heard it before. Heard it before. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh. What advice? You, you've gone through this, and this is something near and dear to my heart, always near and dear to my heart, is when you first discover this and how disconcerting it can be because there's so much information out there but so much information, as you were saying, when you first started talking, it doesn't, didn't make sense. So you didn't resonate with it. And you kind of like, went, Ugh. you just had that yuck feeling of pushing back. Mm-hmm. If you had to meet a reflector today, what's the first thing that you would say to them when they found that out? Uh, they're a reflector. Mm-hmm. Um, just take your time, I guess. Like, I mean, not human design like all systems you know they're not for everybody um and human design isn't for everybody and if it is for you you will keep coming back to it um if you get that feeling where it's like and like for me it wasn't so much like I was I totally resonated with being a reflector it was more just like this system is I don't trust, this is a crazy story. Like, I don't know if I trust it. Mm-hmm. And so I think, you know, if you do find out you're a reflector and you're like, what is this? Like, whether it's because you don't like that you're a reflector or because the story's crazy or whatever, whatever, the story of how it came to be is crazy, which is where I was at. Just, you know, Take your time, trust your process. If you need to put it away because it doesn't feel right for you, do that. And like you said, I did that and I ended up coming back to it a year later. If you don't come back to it, 
that's also okay. Like you need to honor what's best for you. And human design, I think is a wonderful system. And I would, I think that it really is beneficial if you really dive into it. But I also understand that not everybody's going to resonate with it. Yeah. That is really Mm -hmm. wise words. It is very Mm -hmm. true. You don't have to do everything that they tell you to do. You don't even have to like it. Yeah, you don't. You don't. I have been um, uh, exploring my PHS a little bit and I have consecutive appetite for my eating. And I'm just like, you really mean I'm supposed to eat one thing at a time? Like, I feel like that's so boring. And so I've been trying it out and like kind of experimenting with it. But there's also a part of me that like wants to rebel against it because I don't there's like part of me that's like, oh, one thing at a time, really? Yeah. <laughs> so it's really interesting. It's it's really mm-hmm. interesting. I found that some of the things that I found out about my design have rubbed mm-hmm. me up the wrong way. And what I've done mm-hmm. is I've actually like gone back and gone, when do you, when ha- throughout your whole life have you felt mm-hmm. really relaxed and comfortable? And then I go, yeah. oh, it is true. Yeah. I've got indirect light, uh, you know, things like yeah. that. Just like I hardly, I, if I force myself to eat too much during the day, I feel tired and I have like, you know, really? you know how we get carb overloads and stuff. Mm-hmm. Just like, uh, and it's just like, I can't do that anymore. It's just like your body you yeah. knows that you've just been. Yeah. Uh, and I, it's interesting. Cause I, I, there's part of me that like, is like, oh, this is so silly. I don't want to eat one thing at a time. But then I've been like, when I do, I have been like experimenting with some days I'll eat one thing at a time. And some days I'll like, eat like I have for the, my whole life where I take bites of whatever I want and I do actually feel better when I eat one thing at a time so I'm like dang it this is right but this is uh, true after all right. <laughs> just accept it just accept it for that so um yeah super interesting um but yeah like I think for me I found that even the things I don't like tend to be true for me but I I think we already have enough pressure in our lives. And if you as a new reflector or you just found out your reflector are, you know, struggling with anything about the system, like don't pressure yourself. Like we live in a very high pressure world as it is. Yeah. And it's, again, it's like getting out of your head, getting into your body. Stop. Yeah. Doing, I guess what everybody else is doing is start. Super important. It feels for you. Yeah. It's really important because, again, it's especially if you've got a first line, we're just maniacs. Yes, we are maniacs, just <laughs> always wanting to do the research and find out more. And I find that in my um, just, you know, in my career as well, like I really struggle um, like when I was, before I went, this is such a one thing, you're probably going to laugh me. Um, <laughs> when I was deciding if I wanted to be a teacher um, and I was like, I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that I wanted to be a teacher um, before I went to grad school. So I intentionally became a teacher's assistant for two years because I was like, I'm not going to go to grad school unless I know for sure that being a classroom is something I want to do. And so I, like, I became a teacher's assistant, which pays way lower, not that pays, like, all that matters, um, than a um, a full-time teacher, or a regular, like, classroom lead teacher, and I became a teacher's assistant for two years, because I had to research such a one thing, I think that if this was what I wanted to do. I think that's so smart, because why would you want to not uh, you know clock up all those student loans yeah you don't that's true to. i think it's smart see there yes is- you're 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 a one so you, you you have a one line too so you you i guess you get it it's not it's not to be laughed at no. it is i'm doing what feels best for me oh i think it's- and i have had people tell me that that was really smart too so mm-hmm. um where i like where i said you know I really wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing and they were like oh yeah that's a great idea (laughs) so apparently there's something to it that's the story of our lives though isn't it like we go through life and we're conditioned or we're led to believe that we've got to be this or we've got to be that or Mm -hmm. you've got to go to university college you've got to do this and and before we know it we're kind of like put on a conveyor belt thinking this is what I want to do 
and you could spend four to five years, you could spend longer. So many people have, haven't they? They've spent like half their working life, 20 years doing something, they hit 40, burnout, everything breaks, they have a midlife crisis. Yeah. But maybe if they'd just experienced something a little bit more earlier on, they would have gone, mm, this doesn't yeah. feel good. That's and I do, I, I, I try with my students, like there's such a push, I don't know, in US schools, like go to college after you yeah. graduate, you have to go to college. and. Yeah. I'm just like, but some of these kids aren't going to thrive in college. Like some of these kids need a different path. Like college is great for some kids. Yeah. Um, but like, I've had a couple of my kids say like, I don't want to go to college. And I'm like, well, what do you want to do? Like, it bothers me that there's such a push to go to college and schools. And there are some kids that benefit from that push. But when you're pushing everybody to go to college, like, there are kids going to end up in a four-year institution that would really rather be out exploring the world and like yeah. figuring it out, figuring their life out in a different way. And they might just need to be hands-on like electricians, carpenters, builders, mm-hmm. mechanics. Yeah. All sorts of different things. Oh, mm-hmm. teaching. Well, you've probably, have you gone through your chart and seen if you do have the the storyteller and the teaching channels and stuff like that in there, that it's obviously been this push for you most of your life to feel you need to teach. And as you're saying, you know, kind of deep down that you won't do this forever, but you'll probably always um, be a teacher. Yes, I always will be a teacher. I don't think I have the storyteller. Do you know what number that is? I have my chart up right now. 56 do I have I I I put my chart up because I was like I need to look at my chart in case I do it is it 56 is it 56 I have I have I have gave 56 I don't know if it's the storyteller um I do have that fifth gate so about structure and so like having structure is important to me and that works well for teaching um my incarnation cross is the cross of rulership so like I'm supposed to be like basically ruling my world (laughs) um but the interesting thing about the cross of rulership is you're supposed to tell people like what they want to hear so that's kind of been a trip as a teacher too, because I do a lot of negotiating with my kids um, because I'm like not supposed to tell that. Like sometimes I do like say like, no. And sometimes what kids want to hear is no. Like, even though they say they don't, like they really just want an adult to be like the authority figure. But other times it's like, I, they, I just, that's one of the things I've really been working with in my classroom management is I'm not supposed to tell people what they don't want to hear. That's not in my design. And so I'm supposed to like, I do, I negotiate with my kids. I'm like, okay, well, you don't like what I'm telling you. Can we work something out? Um, so I, I do have that, that rulership. And, and I do think that does help me kind of lead in my own unique way. So um, I'm still like, I just started looking at my gates, like, like a month ago and I don't have them all memorized but oh, um no that's half the fun it's, it's like it is it's just exploring it and thinking hang on a second I do this naturally and that's a, probably a good way for you to go through you know look mm-hmm. at this it's just like what am I doing every week or what did I notice this week that I was really yeah. doing and as you were saying like right there you just go okay what's that and you've gone through and you found yeah. it yeah uh-huh. that that's makes what sense makes it exciting because you it just is. find these things out instead of going on this big dive you just find yeah. it and it's yeah, surprise. it's it gives us yeah. surprise. <laughs> it does. No, and I love it. It's like surprise. It's such a joy of being a reflector. Yeah. Um, of course, there's still that disappointment too, which I still, you know, experience from time to time. But the surprise is wonderful, and it's one of like when I really truly have those moments of surprise. It's like, oh my gosh, I love being a reflector because I get to have a life where I'm just constantly surprised and that's so exciting yeah it is isn't it it's like when you really feel it you're like this is this is amazing this is bliss this Mm -hmm. is joy this is yeah yeah absolutely absolutely love 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 talking to you thank you so much do you have anything else you'd like to share with us um any words of wisdom Words of wisdom, um, if you're a reflector who is working full time right now and you just found out you're a reflector and you're like, am I supposed to be doing this? You can do it. 
maybe not forever. Maybe you will need to find something that is a little more kind to your body and soul in the, the future, but you can do it. Um, if you are in the correct environment as a reflector working full time, you can absolutely do it. Just make sure you're listening to your body and knowing when to stop because we have, we, we, we don't always know when to stop because we have, we are undefined. <laughs> I love that. That is so good. Thank you, beautiful soul. So very much for being with us. Of course, of course. To keep in touch with you and hear yeah, yes. as we go through and you journey mm-hmm. through. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>